what I'd like you to do is find the volume. Now, you can draw a picture of this, but you don't need to. I want to draw the picture so you see what's going on, but you don't need to draw the picture. You just need to understand what all these pieces mean, okay? Here's the idea. There's x squared. You with me? Now, bound between 0, sorry, bound between y equals 0 and y equals 2. What is y equals 0 and what is y equals 2? They are. Yeah, in this context, they're horizontal lines. Y, remember, y equals a constant equals a horizontal line, yeah? So what this says is, when you go up to 2, it's bound by this. And it's bound by this. This is y equals 2 and y equals 0. So essentially, I'm not worrying about this piece of the graph. I'm just worried about this piece. Now, here's the problem. Am I going this way or this way? It says around the y, so I'm, I'm basically taking this shape and making this out of it. Making that shape out of it. Do you think the volume will be different if I go this way versus this way? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Why don't you figure that out later, see if it is. Right now, that's not our question. The question is, can you take this, go this way, and <coughs> find, uh, between those, basically, lines, and find the volume of it? Question. When you, um, we're taking it with respect to y, if we want to figure out if the volume is the same, and we turn it with respect to x, would our bounds change as well? If you turn it this way? Yeah. I don't even have any bounds. You said bound by 2, y equals 2, y equals 0. Right. So if you did it with respect this way, half of it. But, okay, I see what you're saying. So <laughs> like that right there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could do that. But I'm not asking with respect to x. I'll, I'll give you the, the long story short. No, the volumes are not going to be the same. One's going to be completely different than the other one. If you take this and roll up this way, or this way, you're going to have different volumes, significantly different volumes. Okay, it's not going to work in the exact same way. Could you do it, revolve around the x? Yes, but that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for, can you revolve it around the y? It'll give you a completely different looking shape even. This, if you revolve it this way, is going to give you kind of like a bullet point, right? This gives you some sort of a weird looking cone thing. That's a technical term for it at least, a uh, weird looking cone thing. So you have, you have this shape, almost like a flower coming out at you. That's what that's going to be. Now, here's the issue. I'll give you a little note as well. When you're revolving things around the y-axis, you need to have them in terms of y, which means you need to solve for x. Don't let that confuse you. I'll say it one more time. When you're revolving around the y-axis, it's got to be x equals y, 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 y. Does that make sense? When you're revolving around the x-axis, you had y equals something in terms of x. That's what we did. Well, I erased the problem, but that's what we did over here. You had all x's, didn't you? f of x, g of x, they're in terms of x. That's because we're going around the x-axis and our bounds are in terms of x. What are our bounds in terms of here? Y, that you better have y's to work with then. So the note for you. <coughs> when revolving around the x-axis, Functions must be in terms of x. That means solved for y. x-axis. Put functions in terms of x because your bounds are in terms of x. You have planes that are perpendicular to the x. It's all about the x. Solve for y. 
When revolving around the y-axis, it's backwards. Put everything in terms of y. Your functions it needs to be in terms of y. Your bounds are in terms of y. Your planes are perpendicular to the y. It's got to be in terms of y. It's solve for x. That's the idea. Notice that we're revolving around the y. You're using this thing. You really are. You're going from c to d. u of y. That's why I put u of y over here, guys, so that you see it has to be in terms of y, not x. You're going around the y-axis, got to be in terms of y, dy. So for us, let's see about our function. If y equals the square root of x. Is this in the right in the right form to go around the y-axis? No. This would be around the x-axis, perfect. Oh my gosh, it'd be awesome for the x-axis. In fact, if you want to right now, you probably figure, well, you'd have to do a little bit of work for bounds, because your bounds would change. Uh, do a little bit of work for that, you'd have to square root of 2, kind of awful. No, you'd have, to, you'd have 4, but that wouldn't be so bad. So you could do that and figure out that the volumes are not the same. Uh, but that's not good enough for going around the y. How do you make it go around the y? Uh, x equals get x equals y squared. Get x equals, very good. And you, you get that by squaring both sides? Sure, we're going to get, if you square both sides, x equals y squared. What's the function that we're talking about? x or y squared? Y squared. Y squared. Mm -hmm. Look what this does. This says, no, 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 I don't want the square root of x anymore. We'll consider it y squared from here to here. Just that little piece though. Just that little piece. So we'll have, let's see if we can do our, our integral. Where are we starting, ladies and gentlemen? Zero. Somebody else, where are we ending? What function goes on the inside? Oh, you know what, I forgot a couple key parts. Of course, we want to fill that out, right? I get so excited just doing this, got this. We do mean this, of course. We got to have a pi. What else are we going to have in there? What do I put in for my my function? What's my function? And then what? Squared. Mm -hmm. So these are in terms of y. y equals 0, y equals 2. That's not a problem. We put this one in terms of y. That's our y squared. We fill out our, our formula that we got. Now, why do we have disks and not a washer? Yeah, we only have one function. There's nothing between there. So we can use the disk method just fine. There's not another function to take away volume from it. Can you do that integral? Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's actually pretty basic. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll get pi from 0 to 2, y to the fourth dy. That's pi. Y to the fifth over 5, because we know how to do integrals real well. From 0 to 2, pi will do 2 to the 5th over 5, minus 0. What we're going to end up getting is 32 pi over 5. By show of hands, how many people feel okay with that so far? Would you like to see if the volume is the same going the other way? If you want to, it's not hard. I mean, why don't you try it on your own? Well, that'd be a good practice for you right now. Set up if I switch this to going around the x. And leaving the bounds the same? Nope. Oh, Got to figure out the bounds. All right, let's do it that way. Okay. Let's Don't just give up on it. Come on. Try something. Try something.
This part should be pretty easy, right? If we're going around the x-axis, we got the pi, we got the r, that's our function, square root of x, and we got the square. Raise your hand if you set up just like that, that way. Yes, guys over here too? Okay. The problem is our bounds. How do we find our bounds up? If we have y, if we have y's right now, how do you figure out? Plug them into x. Plug them into, plug them into x. What are you plugging them in, into? If y equals the square root of x, and you know y is 2 and y is 0, can you figure out x's? Doesn't this look similar to a u substitution when you're changing bounds? Mm -hmm. yeah. Very similar idea. So this says plug in 2 for y. 2 equals square root of x. 0 equals square root of x. Square both sides, x equals 4, and x equals 0. You follow me on that? So now we'll have an integral from 0 to 4. It's going to be a pretty easy integral. It's going to be pi, 0 to 4 of x dx. Square root of x squared is x. That's kind of awesome. That's great. Then we'll have pi, x squared over 2, from 0 to 4. Pi, 4 squared over 2 minus 0 equals same. Way different. Yeah, quite, quite a bit different. Actually, not quite a bit different. I guess it's off by just one thirty second. Uh, but anyway, one, one pi over calculus, that's huge. Pi over 32. <laughs> it's off by pi over 32. Huge difference. <laughs> huge. But it, well, it is different, not the same. So now that you see that, I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. I mean, we understood both these examples. Is the calculus hard? Not really, you know integrals, right? You know them. And I have to give you nice ones to be able to do them. So they're pretty nice. Uh, just remembering how to do it, how to set it up, and being prepared. Don't worry, we have time still. Uh, being prepared that you need to know what variable you have to have the function in terms of, all right? I, I get to forewarn you here. In the next section, I'm going to give you a different way to find volumes. It's going to be volumes by cylindrical shells. And in that case, your variables kind of switch. If you're going around the y, you want in terms of x. If you're going around the x, you want in terms of y. That switches. So be careful on, on these two on these methods. If you're doing disks and washers, your axes match up around the x-axis in terms of x, around the y-axis in terms of y. For the next method, it will switch around the y in terms of x, around the x in terms of y. So get really comfortable with this, that we don't forget about it. You got me? Now we'll stop there today. Uh, we'll talk to a few more examples next time.